सी आई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट्स ऑडियो बुक ऑफ सोशल साइंसेस फॉर क्लास सेवन ऑडियो बुक सोशल एंड पोलिटिकल लाइफ पार्ट टू क्लास सेवन दिस बुक हैज फाइव यूनिट्स इन इट यूनिट वन टाइटल्ड इक्वालिटी इन इंडियन डेमोक्रेसी This unit has one chapter in it titled on equality page number 3 equality in indian democracy teachers note this unit introduces the learner to the critical role of equality in democracy with specific reference to india The Constitution of India guarantees equality to all citizens. Despite this, the daily lives of people in India are far from equal. Earlier discussions on equality in civics textbooks most often reiterated certain provisions of the Constitution without adequately considering the reality of these in people's lives. This unit adopts a different approach. It discusses the need for equality through highlighting the inequalities that continue to be practiced and experienced by various communities. The first chapter introduces the learner to Kanta, Om Prakash Valmiki and Ansaris, all of whom experience inequality in different ways. It is through their experiences that we introduce the concept of dignity. The government's role in passing laws and instituting policies is discussed to show that commitment to the alleviation of existing inequalities is a major part of the work that governments undertake. The chapter also briefly introduces an issue of inequality in the united states of america to highlight that this is a global phenomenon and a feature of many democratic countries the second chapter of this unit is chapter 9 of this book it ties together the main ideas on equality raised throughout the text a significant portion of the last chapter is devoted to discussing people's contribution to the fight for equality this is achieved through focusing on one social movement as well as highlighting creative writings songs poems ways through which people express their demands for equality both chapters aim to help the learner understand that equality and democracy are dynamic and not static concepts this dynamism is reflected in the government's passing of new laws and programs and in people's movements around various social and economic issues kanta om prakash the ansaris and the tava matsya sang all have diverse local equivalents local situation should be used as a practical reference to make the discussion on underlying concepts more relevant and appropriate a discussion on equality in the classroom requires empathy as well as a firm commitment on the teacher's part to ensuring that the dignity of all learners be respected page number 4 chapter 1 titled on equality from page number 4 to page number 15 now let's listen to chapter 1 titled on equality india is a democracy in the class 6th book we looked at the key elements of the democratic government these include people's participation the resolution of conflict and equality and justice equality is a key feature of democracy and influences all aspects of its functioning in this chapter you will read more about equality what it is 
why it is important in a democracy and whether or not everyone is equal in India. Let's begin by looking at Kanta's story. Here on page number 4, there is a picture given where five persons are standing in a row, including Manjeet Kaur as a teacher, Teja Singh as a trader, Girish Rao as a student, Kanta Devi as a domestic worker, and Sujata Kumari again as a domestic worker. On page number four, a story is given in the form of pictures. Before the first picture, it is written, On election day, Kanta and her friend Sujata are waiting to cast their votes. Kanta says, Isn't it good, Suja, that we can all vote as equal citizens of our country? Even Jain Sahib is standing in the line with us. Yes. Go on, Kanta. It's your turn now. I will vote for the candidate who has promised to bring pipe water to our area. Page number 5. On this page, there are seven images made. In these images, we can see artisan Abdul Rahman and housewife Shrabnam Banu. Gracie Laling, a consultant, and Isaac Laling, a government officer. Ruksana Mirza, a media person, Yograj, who is unemployed, and Ashok Jain, an industrialist, all of whom are standing in a line on the election day to cast their votes. Now, the story continues further. Afterwards, Here in this picture, the house owner of the house where Kanta works is leaving the booth after casting his vote. We'll see you later, Kanta. Yes, and Namaste, Sahib. <laughs> namaste, Namaste. Gudia has been running fever and I have to take her to the hospital. But I will have to finish the work at Sahib's house first and ask for some advance. Later in the story, at home, Kanta is talking to her daughter, Gudia, who is not feeling well. Here, I have some of this. You will feel better. And when I get back in the evening, we will go to the hospital. Okay? In the next picture, Kanta can be seen thinking after looking at the unclean society where she lives. It is no wonder that Gudia falls ill often. The basti is never cleaned. Page number 6 On this page, it is shown that Kanta is working in a house. The owners of the house are sitting and having snacks and tea. The lady of the house speaks to Kanta. Make sure to do the corners properly, Kanta. In the next picture, the lady of the house can be seen giving money to Kanta. Here is your advance, Kanta, but don't make a habit of it. No, madam. That same evening, Kanta is standing in the line at the hospital. She tells Gudia, Just few more minutes, Betty. And now, while standing in line, Kanta is thinking about something. Jain Madam and Jain Sahab may stand in the line to vote, but they never have to do it when their children are sick. Do you think Kanta has enough reason to doubt whether she really is equal? List three reasons from the story above that might make her feel like this. Equal right to vote. The story above begins with Kanta standing in line to cast her vote. 
look again at the various people who are standing in line with her. Kanta recognizes her employer, Ashok Jain and Chote Lal, her neighbor. In a democratic country like India, all adults, irrespective of what religion they belong to, how much education they have had, what caste they are or whether they are rich or poor, are allowed to vote. This, as you have already read in the class 6 book, is called Universal Adult Franchise and is an essential aspect of all democracies. The idea of universal adult franchise is based on the idea of equality because it states that every adult in a country, irrespective of their wealth and the communities she or he belongs to, has one vote. Kanta is excited to vote and happy that she is equal to all of the others because each one of them has one vote. But as her day goes on, Kanta becomes less certain about what this equality really means. What is it that makes Kanta unsure? Let's take a look at a day in her life. She lives in a slum and has a drain behind her house. Her daughter is sick, but she cannot take the day off from work because she needs to borrow money from her employers to take her child to the doctor. Her job as a domestic help tires her out. And finally, she ends her day by again standing in a long line. This line in front of the government hospital is unlike the one in the morning because most of the people standing in it are poor. Page number 7 Other Kinds of Equality Kanta is one of many people who live in democratic India and who have the right to vote, but whose daily living and working conditions are far from equal. Apart from being poor, people in India experience inequality in different ways. Let us see what this means by reading the two stories given here. Each of these is based on real incidents in people's lives and reflects the different kinds of inequalities that exist in India. One of the more common forms of inequality in India is the caste system. If you live in rural India, your caste identity is something that you probably learned or experienced very young. If you live in urban India, some of you might think that people no longer believe in caste. But just look at these matrimonials shown from a leading English newspaper and you will see how important the issue of caste continues to be in the minds of highly educated urban Indians. Here on page number 7, there are three different matrimonial ads given from different newspapers. First one reads, Alliance invited for 32 oblique MMS oblique 5 feet 4 inches oblique fair oblique beautiful girl working in IT company Mumbai from BE slash MBA boy working in Mumbai slash abroad from IT industry cast no bar SC slash ST excuse send BHP must. Second one reads Professor qualified beautiful tall girl for Gupta boy 28 oblique 6 CA Working MNC Texas USA dollar eighty K Third one reads Tamil Brahmin Iyengar Groom nineteen eighty one born Naitruvaka Shepherd Gotram Swati Star one eighty centimeter tall fair Circle the reference to caste in the matrimonial advertisements given above. Now, 
Let us read a story about the experiences of a Dalit child attending school. You have already read about Dalits in the class 6th book. Dalit is a term that the so-called lower castes use to address themselves. Dalit means broken. And by using this word, lower castes are pointing to how they were and continue to be seriously discriminated against. Om Prakash Valmiki from 1950 to 2013 is a famous Dalit writer. In his autobiography, Jutan, he writes, I had to sit away from the others in the class and that too on the floor. The match ran out before reaching the spot I sat on. Sometimes I would have to sit way behind everybody, right near the door. Sometimes they would beat me without any reason. When he was in class fourth, the headmaster asked Om Prakash to sweep the school and the playground. He writes, the playground was way larger than my small physique could handle and in cleaning it, my back began to ache. My face was covered with dust. Dust had gone inside my mouth. The other children in my class were studying and I was sweeping. Headmaster was sitting in his room and watching me. I was not even allowed to get a drink of water. I swept the whole day. From the doors and windows of the school rooms, the eyes of the teachers and the boys saw this spectacle. Page number 8 Om Prakash was made to sweep the school and the playground for the next couple of days and this only came to an end when his father, who happened to be passing by, saw his son sweeping. He confronted the teachers and then walking away from the school holding Om Prakash's hand he said loudly for all of them to hear, You are a teacher? So I am leaving now. But remember this much master. He will study right here in this school. And not just him, but there will be more coming after him. On page number 8, the cover of the book Juthan, A Dalit's Life by Om Prakash Valmiki has been printed. A note is given below this cover photograph. It reads, Cover of Om Prakash Valmiki's book, Juthan, which talks about his experiences of growing up as a Dalit boy. Why do you think Om Prakash Valmiki was being treated unequally by his teacher and his classmates? Imagine yourself as Om Prakash Valmiki and write four lines about how you would feel if you were in the same situation as him. The second story is based on an incident that took place in one of India's larger cities and is common practice in most parts of the country. It is a story about Mr. and Mrs. Ansari who were looking to rent an apartment in the city. They had the money and so paying the rent was no problem. They went to a property dealer for help to find a place. The dealer informed them that he knew about quite a few apartments that were available for rent. They visited the first apartment and the Ansaris liked it very much and decided to take it. However, when the landlady found out their names, she made an excuse about how she could not rent the house to someone who ate meat because the building did not have any non-vegetarian residents. Both the Ansaris and the property dealer were surprised to hear this because they could smell fish being cooked in the neighborhood's house. The same excuse was repeated in the second and the third apartments. Finally, the property dealer told them that they might want to change their names and call themselves Mr. and Mrs. Kumar. The Ansaris were reluctant to do this and decided to look some more. In the end, 
It took a whole month of looking at apartments before they found a landlady who was willing to give them a place on rent. Why do you think the Ansaris were being treated unequally? Would you do if you were in the Ansaris position and could not find a place to live because some people did not want to live next to you because of the religion you practice? Page number 9 If you were one of the Ansaris, how would you have responded to the suggestions that you change your name? Can you think of an incident in your life in which your dignity was violated? How did this make you feel? On page number 9, there are three pictures given. In these three pictures, there are three scenes of a famous Hindi movie, Divar, shown. There is a note given below the pictures which reads, In the 1975 film, Divar, a boy who works as a shoe shine refuses to pick up a coin thrown at him. He feels that there is dignity in the work that he does and insists that his fee be given respectfully. Recognizing Dignity You have understood by now that the caste we are born into, the religion we practice, the class background we come from, whether we are male or female, these are often the things that determine why some people are treated unequally. Om Prakash Valmiki and the Ansaris are being treated unequally on the basis of differences of caste and religion. When persons are treated unequally, their dignity is violated. The dignity of both Om Prakash Valmiki and the Ansaris was violated because of the way in which they were treated. By picking on him and making him sweep the school because of his caste, Om Prakash Valmiki's schoolmates and teachers hurt his dignity badly and made him feel as if he was less than equal to all other students in the school. Being a child, Om Prakash Valmiki could do very little about the situation that he was in. It was his father who, on seeing his son sweep, felt angry by this unequal treatment and confronted the teachers. The Ansari's dignity was also hurt when persons refused to lease their apartments to them. However, when the property dealer suggested that they change their name it was their dignity or self-respect that made them refuse this suggestion. Om Prakash and the Ansaris do not deserve to be treated like this. They deserve the same respect and dignity as anyone else. Equality in Indian Democracy The Indian constitution recognizes every person as equal. This means that every individual in the country, including male and female persons from all castes, religions, tribes, educational and economic backgrounds are recognized as equals. This is not to say that inequality ceases to exist. It doesn't. But at least in democratic India, the principle of the equality of all persons is recognized. Page number 10 From earlier, no law existed to protect people from discrimination and ill-treatment. Now there are several that work to see that people are treated with dignity and as equals. On page number 10, the Parliament of India is drawn in a picture. In place of the pillars, various people can be seen standing there in the building, which showcases that a democracy depends equally on all the people. A note is written below the picture. It reads, The Parliament is the cornerstone of our democracy, and we are represented in it through our elected representatives. This recognition of equality includes 
some of the following provisions in the Constitution. First, that every person is equal before the law. What this means is that every person from the president of the country to Kanta, a domestic worker, has to obey the same laws. Second, no person can be discriminated against on the basis of their religion, race, caste, place of birth or whether they are female or male. Third, every person has access to all public places, including playgrounds, hotels, shops and markets. All persons can use publicly available wells, roads and bathing carts. Fourth, untouchability has been abolished. On page number 10, there is a picture given in which we can see many small children eating from their plates. It is written, Zero Hunger, Goal Number 2, Sustainable Development Goal, SDG, www.in.undp.org. The two ways in which the government has tried to implement the equality that is guaranteed in the Constitution is first through laws and second through government programs or schemes to help disadvantaged communities. There are several laws in India that protect every person's right to be treated equally. In addition to laws, the government has also set up several schemes to improve the lives of communities and individuals who have been treated unequally for several centuries. These schemes are to ensure greater opportunity for people who have not had this in the past. Page number 11. One of the steps taken by the government includes the midday meal scheme. This refers to the program introduced in all government elementary schools to provide children with cooked lunch. Tamil Nadu was the first state in India to introduce this scheme and in 2001, the Supreme Court asked all state governments to begin this program in their schools within six months. This program has had many positive effects. These include the fact that more poor children have begun enrolling and regularly attending school. Teachers reported that earlier children would often go home for lunch and then not return to school but now with the midday meal being provided in school, their attendance has improved. Their mothers who earlier had to interrupt their work to feed their children at home during the day now no longer need to do so. This program has also helped reduce caste prejudices because children of all castes in the school eat this meal together and in quite a few places Dalit women have been employed to cook the meal. The midday meal program also helps reduce the hunger of poor students who often come to school and cannot concentrate because their stomachs are empty. There is a picture given here on page number 11. In this picture Children are being served their midday meals at a government school in Uttarakhand. What is the midday meal program? Can you list three benefits of the program? How do you think this program might help promote greater equality? Find out about one government scheme in your area. What does this scheme do? Whom is this scheme set up to benefit? While government programs play an important role in increasing equality of opportunity, there is much that still needs to be done. While the midday meal program has helped increase the enrollment and attendance of poor children in school, there continues to be big differences in our country between schools that the rich attend and those that the poor attend. Even today, there are several schools in the country in which Dalit children like Om Prakash Valmiki 
are discriminated against and treated unequally. These children are forced into unequal situations in which their dignity is not respected. This is because people refuse to think of them as equal, even though the law requires it. Page number 12 Here on page number 12, a picture of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar is given. With his coat next to this picture, it reads, It is disgraceful to live at the cost of one's self-respect. Self-respect is the most vital factor in life. Without it, man is a cipher. To live worthily with self-respect, one has to overcome difficulties. It is out of hard and ceaseless struggle alone that one derives strength, confidence and recognition. Man is mortal. Everyone has to die some day or the other. But one must resolve to lay down one's life in enriching the noble ideals of self-respect and in bettering one's human life. Nothing is more disgraceful for a brave man than to live life devoid of self-respect. By B. R. Ambedkar one of the main reasons for this is that attitudes change very slowly. Even though persons are aware that discrimination is against the law, they continue to treat people unequally on the basis of their caste, religion, disability, economic status and because they are women. It is only when people begin to believe that no one is inferior and that every person deserves to be treated with dignity, that present attitudes can change. Establishing equality in a democratic society is a continuous struggle, and one in which individuals as well as various communities in India contribute to, and you will read more about this in this book. Issues of Equality in Other Democracies you are probably wondering whether India is the only democratic country in which there is inequality and where the struggle for equality continues to exist. The truth is that in many democratic countries around the world, the issue of equality continues to be the key issue around which communities struggle. So, for example, in the United States of America, the African Americans whose ancestors were the slaves who were brought over from Africa continue to describe their lives today as largely unequal. This despite the fact that there was a movement in the late 1950s to push for equal rights for African Americans. Prior to this, African Americans were treated extremely unequally in the United States and denied equality through law. For example, when traveling by bus, they either had to sit at the back of the bus or get up from their seat whenever a white person wished to sit. Rosa Parks, who lived from 1913 till 2005, was an African American woman. Tired from a long day at work, she refused to give up her seat on a bus to a white man on the 1st of December 1955. Her refusal that day started a huge agitation against the unequal ways in which African Americans were treated and which came to be known as the Civil Rights Movement. Page number 13 On this page, there is a picture of Rosa Parks given. In the picture, she can be seen sitting in a bus alongside a white male. There is a note given with the picture which reads, Rosa Parks, an African-American woman, changed the course of American history with one defiant act. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 prohibited discrimination on the basis of race, religion or national origin. It also stated 
that all schools would be open to African American children and that they would no longer have to attend separate schools specially set up for them. However, despite this, a majority of African Americans continue to be among the poorest in the country. Most African American children can only afford to attend government schools that have fewer facilities and poorly qualified teachers as compared to white students who either go to private schools or live in areas where the government schools are as highly rated as private schools. Page number 14. On this page, there is an excerpt from Article 15 of the Indian Constitution given. It reads, Prohibition of discrimination on grounds of religion, race, caste, sex or place of birth. 1. The state shall not discriminate against any citizen on grounds only of religion, race, caste, sex, place of birth or any of them. 2. No citizen shall, on grounds only of religion, race, caste, sex, place of birth or any of them, be subject to any disability, liability, restriction or condition with regard to a. Access to shops, public restaurants, hotels and places of public entertainment or b. The use of wells, tanks, bathing hearts, roads and places of public resort maintained wholly or partly out of state funds or dedicated to the use of the general public. Challenge of Democracy No country can be described as being completely democratic. There are always communities and individuals trying to expand the idea of democracy and push for a greater recognition of equality on existing as well as new issues. Central to this is the struggle for the recognition of all persons as equal and for their dignity to be maintained. In this book, you will read about how this issue of equality affects various aspects of our daily lives in democratic India. As you read these chapters, think about whether the option think about whether the equality of all persons and their being able to maintain their dignity is upheld. Page number 15. Exercises. 1. In a democracy, why is universal adult franchise important? 2. Reread the box on Article 15 and state two ways in which this article addresses inequality. 3. In what ways was Om Prakash Valmiki's experience similar to that of the Ansaris? 4. What do you understand by the term, all persons are equal before the law? Why do you think it is important in a democracy? 5. According to the Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act 2016, persons with disabilities have equal rights and that the government should make possible their full participation in society. The government has to provide free education and integrate children with disabilities into mainstream schools. This law also states that all public places, including buildings, schools, etc., should be accessible and provided with ramps. There is a photograph given on page number 15. Here in this photograph, Two persons are carrying a differently abled boy down the stairs. Think about the boy who is being carried down the stairs. Do you think the above law is being implemented in this case? What needs to be done to make the building more accessible for him? How would his being carried down the stairs affect his dignity as well as his safety? Glossary 
universal adult franchise. This is a very important aspect of democratic societies. It means that all adults, those who are 18 and above citizens, have the right to vote irrespective of their social or economic backgrounds. Dignity This refers to thinking of oneself and other person as worthy of respect. Constitution this is a document that lays down the basic rules and regulations for people and the government in the country to follow. Civil Rights Movement A movement that began in USA in 1950s in which African American people demanded equal rights and an end to racial discrimination. You were just listening to chapter number one, titled, On Equality. With this, chapter one of total nine chapters ends here. Narrators, Shalini Singh and Vebhav Srivastav. You were just listening to this audio book. Technical control, Bati Langlingdo. Technical assistance, Mayank Kumar. Assistance in production, Tanu Gupta. Direction and production, Vandana Arimardan. This audiobook is brought to you by CIET and CERT, New Delhi, India.